Welcome to uh, my short panel uh, presentation, Lessons from Fieldwork with Gorwa, Hadza, and Ihanzu Speaker Communities. Um, so by way of a brief timeline, I know my time is limited here, um, I began working with speakers of a language called Gorwa in 2012 as part of my master's studies at the University of Dar es Salaam. And this was largely under a model where I was the one doing uh, the collecting of the data, asking the questions, and deciding what was to be recorded or not. So essentially all parts of the documentation. Um, by, 2012, uh, by 2017, however, my working model had entirely changed to one in which rather than me doing everything, it was members of the local Gorwa community who were conducting research on their own language and in their own communities. My job now was more in training and support. Uh, so when I began working with speakers of Ihanzu and Hadza, uh, the community researcher paradigm remained the same. So during these concurrent documentations, which would take place over the span of two years and continue to present uh, in central Tanzania, we would train and support members of these speaker communities to document their own languages. Now, two years on from the beginning of these projects, I'd like to share some of what we learned. The image here is from the training workshop we held at the very beginning of these new documentation projects. And the training was really crucial to the success of the project. And if you're interested in reading the associated report outlining this training, you can do so by following the QR code on the screen. Um, I've given my talk the main title, Remote But Not Distant. And this is because I want to actively discourage the belief that all linguistic fieldwork can be conducted from behind a computer in Europe or within a seminar room in the city. Um, I still believe that fieldwork is primarily just that work in the field. That is, the actual physical context in which the phenomenon one studies exists and can be observed and experienced. And with that said, when one is trying to conduct work with community members and that community exists over a widely distributed geographic area, or one in which getting from one place to another is difficult, there are tools and strategies which can be used to increase your effectiveness. In this map, the red circle in the inset shows the area in which our research took place in East Africa. In the main map, these small yellow icons show where each of our local researcher teams were based. Basically, each team had their own audio recorder, video camera, and laptop computers, which they would use to document their language. For more information on how these teams were set up at the beginning of the project, I encourage you to follow the QR code on the screen to a talk given by my colleague and co-principal investigator, Richard Griscom. The task of documentation can be broken down into several smaller tasks, which I've roughly represented here. A recording session must be planned, the recording session must be carried out, Data must be organized and backed up. Language data must be analyzed in a basic way. So in my case, that's transcribed using a working orthography and translated into Swahili so I can understand it, for example. And then everything must be archived for posterity. So how do you do this uh, in this context? Well, most of Tanzania now enjoys some level of basic mobile internet capacity. So in our context, we could receive regular, mainly text-based data from our local researchers using relatively basic mobile applications. For example, our local researchers would record basic participant metadata, such as the gender, age, and names of people in recordings, and session metadata, including location and content description, using a tool called Open Data Kit on smartphones we provided uh, as part of the equipment. When this information was logged, it would be sent to a server which we could then monitor to see what kind of material was being recorded, and even things like the exact GPS coordinates of the recording session. And again, for more information on Open Data Kit, I encourage you to follow the QR code on screen to a detailed description by my colleague Richard Griscom. In addition to this, the files produced in transcribing and translating the recordings were also text files. So um, the piece of software that we were using was called Elon, and the, uh, the product file is an EAF file. Uh, so these are also text files, and uh, they could be sent to us weekly uh, using WhatsApp, which is an application in widespread use in Tanzania. 
On the other hand, however, there were parts of the workflow that could not be coordinated remotely and that required the principal researcher to be physically present. The actual audio and video recordings, uh, for example, were simply too large to send via the internet in any sort of straightforward way. And as such, I had to periodically visit the research stations and copy all the recordings to hard drives, which were either couriered to the Netherlands or came back with me to the Netherlands when I physically returned. In addition to this, if the computer hard drives of our local researchers became accidentally full, the computers would refuse to properly boot, and fixing this sometimes required running a special boot process which was beyond our local researchers' training in many cases. And so, once again, if this happened, I often had to travel to the research station to make repairs. All of this is to say that fieldwork can be conducted anywhere, and it can be ameliorated by employing technologies to help both integrate workflows and improve communication. But with that said, at the end of the day, the outsider linguist should not think that technology will do all the work and that he or she can simply remain at home or in the nearest city. After all, one of the greatest gifts of fieldwork is being with the people with whom you work, learning about their daily lives, understanding them as individuals, and building solidarities both rooted in the shared documentary labor, but also in shared humanity. In this way, fieldwork can be remote, as I hope I've illustrated, but it can never be distant from the people, their culture, and the central occupations and concerns of their communities.